And who says brown boys can't be romantic? Dude, you just gotta f when you're hitting it like missionary, just like suck a toe or do, bro. Your her legs are your. Ah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is God I Mean Spicy, and I saw a YouTube video recently that I just need to talk about with someone. The Instagram algorithm has somehow figured out that I'm Indian, which is beyond me. I mean, it's not like I mention it in every waking breath that I take. And I saw a clip of Pop Shift's online series, They See Me Dating, where they take two South Asian individuals who've never met each other before and they invite them onto the show for a blind date where they ask each other questions to determine if they are romantically compatible. They've done quite a few episodes of these blind dates through They See Me Dating, but one clip that I saw online prompted me to go to YouTube and watch the full episode. May I present to you Gibran and Nikita. My name is Nikita Srinivasan. I'm 26 years old. I'm a graphic designer and I'm from the Bay Area. Come on, man. I'm Gibran Siddiqui. I'm 25, Austin, Texas, born and raised, and I'm a data analyst at Zoom. I am very much a fan of how this guy says his name. I just know exactly how he introduces himself to Americans. My name's Gibran, which is short for Gibran Lames. <laughs> and I'm on Bill Mill. Bill Mill is a bust. Everyone's a fob on Bill Mill. There's a lot of people where their bio is like, looking for girl who is submissive, looking for a girl who is going to be cooking all the time. Okay, I'm gonna admit something rather embarrassing about myself here. I mean, we're friends, right? For a brief period in time, I was on Bill Mill. Bill Mill, if you don't know, is a dating app designed for South Asian people living abroad. The app sucks. It's because it's designed really poorly. You can set your location to United States, and you can set your radius to 100 miles. Yes, 100 miles. A bitch is desperate. And the app will proudly, unflinchingly show you men in New Zealand. I mean, I'm not that desperate, yet. Nikita says she's not a fan of Dilmil because of the amount of fobs on that app that are looking for submissive housewives. Okay, we all have our preferences, but I don't know if I would have said that one out loud. <laughs> like, sister, your internalized racism is showing. If you don't want to date a guy from India, maybe, I don't know, don't download an app meant for Indian people. And I can tell you from experience, whether the man was raised in the homeland or raised anywhere else, some things are just universal. Men will always be men. <laughs> I moved here to rap. To rap? Gibberish okay. on all platforms, J-B-B-R-S-H. <laughs> that's my, that's my uh, stage name, is Gibberish. Uh, gibberish? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I moved here for this rap game, bro. I'm going all in, bro. I'm not dating anyone exclusively, and I've made that very clear with my girlfriends. <laughs> I'm out here, man. Y'all know I ain't dark. I'm a light skin. <laughs> and y'all know that I be pimping. Let's go. Oh, let's go, bro. Come on, man. Oh, let's go. Bro. Bruh. Damn, bro. Oh, bro. Bro, bro, bro. Dude, bro. Dude, dog. <laughs> I would like to ask Pop Shift, where on God's green earth did they find this man? But I know damn well where they found him. Exactly where all the other men are. I'd say one of my red flags is probably thinking that I have very few red flags. Ha <laughs> uh, Too handsome? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't think of any red flags? Here, Gibran, let me help you. You're currently not willing to be exclusive, you keep calling her bro, you refer to yourself as a light skin, you've plugged your rap career 20 times already, and to top it all off, you are wearing two watches. So I was like, dude, I need to know what my heart rate is at. Like, I've got to be burning like significant calories right now, but I can't leave the swag at home, bro. So this one is for health, and this one is for wealth. Come on, baby. This one also, most of the time, is not even telling the right time. So this one tells time to. <laughs> not gonna lie, that's funny. One for help and one for wealth. That is absolutely gold. This is the clip that prompted me to look up the whole episode online. <laughs> As an Indian American woman, a lot of what we know about dating is taught to us through what we see online and what we see on TV. So it's important that we have this representation, you know? To teach us how to properly interact with each other in the real world to set us up for successful romantic relationships. Where's the craziest place you've had sex? 
a Ferris wheel. Mine was in the park, in a hammock. In a hammock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any secret fantasies? <laughs> All my fantasies are very public. <laughs> <laughs> Getting squirted on is lit. It's like people like, oh, squirt is piss. Like they're the same thing. Like pee on my chest sometime. I don't <laughs> know, bro. You know, you can only spend so much time on the Hoover Dam, and like eventually you need to get down to like, uh, you know, the chili ring, bro. You gotta eat the booty like groceries. You know, I have a theory. All daisies are insane. Regardless of where we're from or where we were born, whether it was the homeland or the diaspora, by the way, I hate the word diaspora. It sounds like a STD. We are all a little bit crazy. And I think it's because we are being forced to assimilate to a world which our bodies were not built for. The world is modernizing so, so fast. Our bodies were not evolved for this life. This body was not meant to clock in for 12 hour shifts and interact with human beings through a screen. This body was evolved from generations of women whose hardest task of the day was carrying a clay pot of water from the river to the hut for her husband and seven children or whatever the f my ancestors were doing not to go all birkenstock chai tea latte namaste on you guys but there is a discrepancy between the body the mind and the soul and our reality the last time i was in india i went to a public library and i found this book on ayurveda i just had to take a picture of this page it is a proposed schedule for spiritual practice in times of high stress 6 a.m. Arise promptly on awakening. Engage in calming activities. 10 a.m. Do creative, non-stressful work. Artwork and other visual activities are generally calming. Exercise care and sensitivity while dealing with others during this time. I don't know about you guys, but 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. are my primetime bitch hours. It's when I film these videos. Us girlies have strayed too far. This body was not meant for this life, but we don't know any other form of life, so we just keep chugging along, and in turn it makes us crazy. And you might be thinking to yourself, Well, no, at work I know this Indian person who's like pretty nice and normal, and you know, they're not too crazy, they don't say anything, they're pretty introverted. No. No, no. They are bottling up the crazy, because they know that you are not prepared for how insane they truly are. This is where there is differentiation between Daisies that grew up in the homeland versus Daisies that grew up elsewhere. People like me, people who grew up in the States, we learn to bottle up the crazy for two reasons. One, we were mercilessly bullied in school, and two, we grew up with strict parents. Gibran is what happens in the absence of those things. He states he has very chill parents, and judging by the way he acts, I don't think his ego was ever checked by the schoolyard bully. He just lays all his crazy out on the table, just certified freak, seven days a week. My man is on the first date with this girl, who is still a complete stranger to him, talking about squirting on one's chest and eating ass. When you're getting to know someone on the first date, a little bit of flirting is okay, right? Like, you know, what that mouth do? <laughs> but squirting and eating ass? Those are third date topics. Not like I would know, I rarely ever get that far. Call me crazy. Call me conservative even. Maybe women like being talked to like this. Maybe I'm the loser and I just need to get out more often. I mean, it seems like Nikita is into it. I mean, she's all giggling and smiling and flipping her hair. Um, some people in the comments were saying that the only reason she's not getting grossed out by this guy is because he's rather attractive. Yeah, okay, sure. I mean, handsome men can get away with murder. He just came home from jail 28 years, he did. Oh, that's good. The murder. But I would also like to draw attention to the fact that Nikita is, in fact, drunk. And in all fairness, they were only talking about this stuff because they were drawing all those cards with questions like, what's your darkest fantasy? Or what's your guilty pleasure? And obviously, those questions lean towards a certain type of answer. It's like on Family Feud when the question is something like, what's something that men have that women don't? Peter! But keep in mind, this is what these two are saying when 
other people are watching them with cameras. Imagine what they'd say to each other if no one was watching. <laughs> Just when you think it cannot get any more unbearable to watch, Nikita drops this absolute bombshell. My yeah. nana's gonna be pissed, bro. She's seen I'm My drinking nana's alcohol. Dead. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she's a wonderful lady. She literally died this week. <laughs> It, bro. You know, I'm not exactly granddaughter of the year, but at least I didn't go on a dating show and talk about taking dumps while my grandma's ashes were still warm. I do shit myself every time I have dairy. You even lactose free? So they have lactose free milk. Yeah, I know. Oh, your guilty pleasure is to have the lactose full. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I don't think the lactose affects taste at all, so you're just wanting to shit yourself. Both Gibran and Nikita are absolutely insane, but you know what? I wish them the best of luck. I hope you both find whatever it is you both are looking for in this life, whether it's in each other's arms, in a hammock, in a park, or on a Ferris wheel. So there's a link in the description of this video for people who want to be on They See Me Dating, and I, I did try to apply. Yes, I know, I spent like the past 20 minutes or so roasting this show, but I think it would be kind of fun. I just want to see who they pair me up with. Also, I think I'm a perfect candidate for this show. I mean, I'm Indian. I'm somewhat interesting, I have no clue how to talk to men, and if he brings up sex, I'll just break down crying and start talking about my childhood trauma. It'll make for great entertainment! Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribe if you want to see more, follow my guy Jabron on all his socials to support his rap career, follow me on Instagram for all of my daily deranged thoughts, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now. I am most devastated to report that They See Me Dating's casting has officially closed for the next season, so I guess that means I have to resort to meeting men the old-fashioned way. Going to base pro shop and looking clueless. What's that little toy at the end of the fishing pole called? Bait? You know, my uh, nickname when I was younger was um, Jailbait. <laughs>